The Packers have played their four quarters. Now it's time for the fifth quarter. Hey, welcome back to The View for another edition of the fifth quarter. Seems like a month ago I was out in the Emerald City, <laughs> and uh, for the Packers it seems like two years ago since they won a road game. More fourth quarter disappointment at CenturyLink as the Seahawks knock off the Pack 27-24. We'll talk about it, but not too much because it was just so frustrating again. The way it started, just fantastic. The way they grabbed the lead late again and the way it got away again. Packers, Niners, Browns. Only teams that have yet to win on the road this year. That is not good company. So they sit at four, five, and one. Six to go. Is the table set for a run? Yeah, I'm not so sure. They're really beat up. We're going to update you on some injuries that occurred on Thursday night. Look ahead to the Minnesota Vikings coming up on Sunday at U.S. Bank. And we'll do it all with our guest tonight. Third chime's the charm. M didn't make it. <laughs> v didn't make it. But S will. Marquez Valdez Scantley coming over tonight. So we'll have a good time with the Packers rookie wide receiver alongside, as usual, Matt Z. Hello there, Matt. Z. Hello, hello, hello. But before we talk... Packers football, what happened in Seattle. Can we all just have a moment of silence for Alex Smith's right leg? Ouch. Yeah. Snap, crackle, and pop. That was nasty. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, 300-pounders times two at 20 miles an hour when you're planted. It just oh. it, it gave way. It's and bad, for bad. whatever reason... I can't stop watching oh, that you're video. You're one of those guys? Yeah. There it's, are some who turn away, can't look at it. You it's like just... a NASCAR car crash. That's what I'm drawn to. <laughs> I, I don't know why. All and right. every time I watch it, I feel a little bit more sick in my stomach. But then I hit refresh and watch it All again. All right. Well, if you really want to get sick, let's go back and look at that scene. Yeah. Uh, man, I, I don't know what to a make of this A game that was scene. there. It was there. Uh, yeah, it was there again. And uh, I, I don't know what the answer is. And now the cry has been sounded. Questions being asked at press conferences about McCarthy's future. Nothing's going to happen between now and no. December 30th. So let's not <laughs> get too not. wound up about this. And uh, I, I'm not going to go in too in-depth, I, I don't think. But... I'll just say this. I, I could understand if it happens at the end of the year if they don't make the playoffs. Uh, 13 years is a long run. Andy Reid was, what, 13, 14 in Philadelphia, had a very long, successful run, and it just they just figured it out. It wasn't going to work anymore. Not that Mike McCarthy has suddenly turned into a bad coach. Not that Andy Reid was a bad coach. Andy Reid's a good coach. He's going to get a big game tonight very at 9-1 and one with Kansas City on a second go-round. And the very same could happen to McCarthy if he would land somewhere else, and he'd be certainly a top candidate anywhere else. Then again, Pittsburgh Steelers have hung with Mike Tomlin, who won a Super Bowl early, got to another one, and uh, thankfully didn't win that one either uh, in Dallas, uh, but went through a seven and nines, eight and eights, missed the playoffs two or three years. Uh, they stayed with him. Uh, they got the picks and got some talent back, uh, and suddenly here he is again leaving the division and looking very formidable once again. So there's something to be said for patience, even in a long tenure. This is not a bottoming out for the Green Bay Packers. Granted, it's alarming they won only four games and Thanksgiving is three days away, uh, but it is not, you know, top five draft choice and let's really reload. And you still have the quarterback. You've got two new coordinators you're still, you know, implementing into this program. So there's something telling me that don't be surprised you know, if they give them another year, but then we, could we go through this whole process right. again? I don't think they're going to do a long-term deal if they do such a thing, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if they say, all right, Mike, this was a, another bad year. Last year, chalk it up to the collarbone. This year, just talk it up to who knows what's going on in the fourth quarters of these games. I mean, of their five losses on the road, three are against division leaders, and they had leads in all of them, okay? Uh, and they just haven't been able to finish. So, arguments both ways. Fandom wants him hung tomorrow. At least the vocal fandom wants Mike well, McCarthy Well, social gone. media has, yeah, as and McCarthy said, back when there were newspapers. And that's often <laughs> that was the quote. minority of a fan base. It's just the most vocal portion of a fan base. The drumbeat's getting louder, though. It's Yeah, and it's the most seen. And, I, and that's understandable. Yes, and then, you know, because there's stories written in the beginning of the year, again, about is there a rift between Rodgers and McCarthy? And then if the team isn't winning, suddenly people focus on those things. Would I be surprised if he's back another year? No. Be surprised if he's gone? No. 
because you have a new GM, and oftentimes GMs will stick with a head coach for a year ah, and then want to bring the in caveat. a guy. The GM's not making the call here, Z. I know. Mr. Murphy's making but he's not about that. Granted, yeah. he's not like Judge Perrins or Dominic Olenicek, who are businessmen or sure. judges or whatever, uh, trying to run a football operation. But every time uh, the president or the executive committee got their hands on the football operations, it was a mess. It was a mess. I, I'm really not in favor of this whole structure thing. I wasn't sure. when it came out, and now I'm, I'm getting even more nervous about it. But we'll see what happens. So we're a long ways from that. They are six games still left to win, and if for some ungodly reason they win them all, they're going to be in the playoffs. But until they figure out how to win on the road, they're going nowhere, and we'll right. see in 2018. Because you have road games, and can you win six in a row? You've got Minnesota. You got Chicago. On the road. Road games. At, ah, but you got the Jets on the road. Oh, I know. Yeah, listen, you've got some easy ones in there, seemingly. Arizona. Seemingly maybe. easy ones. All right, we'll see. But you've got tough divisional opponents yeah, I know. left. All right. But I was feeling good about how they were going to prepare and get ready for the Rams. Yeah. Off the bye. They were right there. Yep. Same with the Patriots. Tough opponent in Foxborough. Yep, they were right there. Same thing with Seattle. Jump out 14-3. <coughs> The team was ready to play. They came out ready to play and played well. But for some reason, when the momentum pendulum started to swing, these guys on either side of the ball cannot prevent it from swinging all the way over and leading into another crash. Well, and especially on the defensive side of things, the injuries started to mount, right, on that defensive line. Do you know who was line. on the field in that last series, Z, <laughs> for the Packers? Tyler Lancaster, yep. Montrevious Adams, Ibrahim mm -hmm. Campbell, yep. Will Redmond, Tony Brown. Yeah. Uh... You didn't have your best. That's not exactly. You didn't the have your best run person. stoppers, and Seattle really got their ground going, ground game well, going, the especially that last the league. They were, they were, yeah, they were good yeah. even before the injuries. But anyway, so it was a tough trip. Highlight of the trip: uh, Seattle's a beautiful city, uh, as we all know. It's uh, really gorgeous, and I had a bit, chance to visit with Mike Holmgren for about 20 minutes before the ball game. He did national radio and haven't seen Mike for a while. He says hello to everybody. Still my favorite coach I ever covered. Did he ask how his street is doing? Uh, no, no, <laughs> but uh, had a nice Make visit. sure everything's okay yeah. on Holmgren yeah, Way. Yeah, everything's fine on Holmgren Way, bustling uh, as it is. But yeah. anyway, Mike says hi and uh, he looked good and the family's all well and done. All right, let's go back to Thursday night. I know it was a long time ago, but we'll refresh your memory with the locker room coats after a tough one. 27-24, Mike McCarthy leads it off and had to talk about yet another one that got away. Well, a tough, hard-fought game this evening. Um, disappointing loss for us. You know, we still haven't uh, quite got it done on the road. Um, I thought the, the team did an excellent job in the preparation, short week and so forth. Uh, coming up here uh, early, we were ready to play. Uh, I thought we, you know, hit the market definitely starting fast. They made the you know big plays, some big plays in the fourth quarter, and then we didn't have enough to finish it. No, they couldn't. But Pete Carroll's club found a way to finish it. Really happy about this win for our guys, for all of us, uh, for the, the 12s that were waiting for us. We it took us a long time to get going uh, in the first half. We just didn't play well at all. Um, but it does show you that that, you know, that doesn't decide the game. No, it doesn't. Got to play 60, right? Defense forced that fumble on the very first snap, and Aaron Jones cashed it in for the early lead. Kenny Clark thought for sure this was going to be the one. We started fast, got a turnover on the first play. We just came up short. We got to put that game away. We lost by three points, by two points to the next team, and losing the last, you know, possession, I mean, a couple of possessions, you know, on the road, and they're all close losses. Uh, we got to find a way to put games away. Got to find a way. Got to find a way. Could not have started better. Huh? Couldn't have started better no, on the road. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. All right. They got their field goal to get on the board. But then later in the first, Aaron Rodgers found, yep, the new deep threat, Robert Tanyan, <laughs> on a 54-yard bomb to make it 14-3. Uh, he just was in my vision, to be honest with you. I mean, he, he just kept going. Bobby's made plays since he got here, and I was – Really proud of him that he made the team, first of all, because I thought he was very deserving. But kind of saw him in my vision and just tried to throw it as far as I could. Do it as far as he could. That was funny. Uh, Thursday night football. Thursday nights, I toss cornhole over at Title Town. Oh, all right. So we're all tossing, all tossing, and Tanya makes the catch. Everyone stops 
and almost everyone says, Who's that? Who guy? the hell's 85? No kidding. Everyone was scrambling to figure out Tanya, Tanya, who is this guy? He made the play, first catch, and uh, his first touchdown as well. Well, Seattle answered with a couple of scores to lead 17 14 until Jones pulled down a 24 yarder on the seat of his pants, making 21 17 at the break. Mason's 36 yarder with 823 left made it 24 20, and Crosby was thinking, finally a road win. You know, obviously, uh, had a good plan. We, uh, Played well early on, especially. Uh, you know, was disappointed not to get those points uh, you know, on my on my kick, but uh, and we we kept battling back. You know, had the lead there at halftime, and uh, yeah, that uh, one hurts. Oh, man, this really is getting to be painful, isn't it? A depleted defense couldn't get the stop. Russell Wilson drove Seattle 75 in seven plays, capped the drive with a 15-yard TD to tight end Ed Dixon. I thought that whole drive was pretty exceptional. You know, I thought the offensive line did a tremendous job. We were able to get the ball down the field. We knew we had to throw the ball. Let's go win the game. Let's go do it. We had to run the ball too, you know, occasionally here and there. But you know, let's let's, let's go win. Yeah, but see, that, he drives me crazy. <laughs> I, mean, I can't. I'm not a fan. Yeah, I loved him as a Badger, but right, not as a. Seahawk. There's just something about just, him. I don't know. I don't know. Syrup, syrup, syrup. Yeah. Anyway, the ball was in Aaron's hands. You know, even after that touchdown, but his third and two pass skipped into the ground. And McCarthy decided to punt, and the Packers never got it back. Good grief. So we'll talk about the decision later. Some big performances were wasted. Kyler Fackrell's second three-sack hat trick of the season. Yeah, I mean, the win is really all that matters, you know. Um, and, I, you know, I'm happy with how I played, but I think I left some plays out there. So it's definitely not like I played a perfect game um, anyway. So... Uh, it was a tough loss. <laughs> Another sigh in that locker room at CenturyLink. But the bright spot, Kyler Fackrell. Kyler Fackrell. They're calling him Sackrell. I know. Why not? Holy Fackrell. He's been playing, that's for sure. Devontae Adams, huge game again. 10 for a buck, 66. An effort that only leaves his back pressed against the wall. There's no more deferria. And then, I mean, all you, all you can do is focus on the next one at this point. I mean, there's, there's nothing we can do about the Seahawks game. It's, it's over. Um, you know, our record is what it is, so we just got to grind out these, these next ones. Then the next one in Minneapolis, and even with six to go, is Tremont Williams worried this season has gotten away? It's not going to do anything to worry. Concern? Maybe a little bit. I'm going to lie to you. Maybe a little bit. But <laughs> am I optimistic? I'm very optimistic that we can still get the job done. It's not going to be easy, as you all know, but I'm optimistic that we can get the job done. And so was Aaron Rodgers, even though he was asked point blank if there's hope for this team. I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> I mean, come on, what am I supposed to say? Of course there's hope. Of course we believe in each other. You know, it's just going to take one galvanizing moment. So whether that's a speech or a practice or something happens in the game, something's got to get this thing going. I thought, I thought we had moments tonight where that was the way we were going. You know, the defense, a lot of injuries, but guys battled. So, I mean, nobody gave up. You know, we just didn't uh, play well enough when we had to play well enough. Was that galvanizing moment? Fourth and two, four minutes to go? Yeah, I know a lot of people questioning that, but if you make it, it's great. If you miss it, it's awful. I mean, yeah. it's... All right, you still give up three. Yeah. And it goes to 30 to 24, maybe. You had a timeout and the two-minute warning. When he decided upon it, Mike McCarthy said we played the numbers. Yeah. But the way that defense was so depleted, and he knew it was depleted at that time, the number that really mattered was 12. Sure. I'd take my chances two yards with 12 rather than give up 70 or 20 or two first downs with that defense. No matter the numbers. Yes. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is such a weapon. You feel very confident in any of those situations, home or on the road. 10 seconds left in the game, whatever it might be, that he's going to be able to make a play for you. Oh, man. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And it did. Again, 27 24. But the it's, final not like, it's not like this team right. hasn't gone on a run before. It's not like they haven't gone on a heck of a run to close out seasons. So who knows? They got to do it again, beginning with Sunday in Minneapolis. All right, we're just getting going. We are live from the Stadium View on Home Greenway. We welcome our listeners from Wausau and Sheboygan, viewers uh, worldwide on our Midwest Communications web. And the View, always a great place to come any night of the week, Z, including yeah. Monday nights. Good to be back here. Monday nights, always some great happy hour specials from 10A to close on Mondays, 10A to 7 the rest of the week. They always have live music Tuesdays. You got Singo and DJ Trivia. Come on down. But this is the place, home or away, 
to be for Packers games. Away games, they always do shots every time the Packers score touchdowns, things well, like that. So great place to be. All right. When we come back, we'll introduce you to the Pack's top rookie wide out. Marquez Valdez Scantling joins us when the fifth quarter returns right after this timeout. All right, welcome back, everybody. Tough one in Seattle. Big ones to come for the four, five, and one Packers. It's a pleasure to introduce our guest tonight. Rookie wide receiver, fifth round draft choice out of South Florida. And he's putting together a fantastic start to his Packer career. 24 catches, 410 yards, 17 a pop. That's ninth best in the entire National Football League, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have him on the bull from South Florida. Please welcome Marquez Valdez Scantling to the fifth quarter. MVS. What's up? What's up, everybody? How are you? Thanks for coming over. Finally, we was able to rope you in. We blame the stay program last week, but uh, we got you here. How's it going? Rookie year, special football. Um, I'm enjoying it. You know, living out my dream. You know, couldn't ask for a better situation to be in. What was it like coming in among three drafted rookies against a heavy backload of veteran receivers? And what were your expectations? How did you try and just kind of integrate yourself into what was now your job um i was just coming to work you know um i didn't think anything of it you know i know it's going to be competition but that's going to be everywhere you go um you know i was built for competition um and i was just ready to come here and show what i can do you were saying uh after your second 100 yard game this year that day one you knew you belong yeah i mean you know, they brought me here for a reason you know i, I can play in this league for a very long time and um, I'm going to be confident in my ability no matter what happens. So much talk about how you guys had to earn trust of Aaron Rodgers. What was that process like, and how long did it take you to think you earned his trust? Uh, I mean, I'm still earning it. Um, it's, yeah. not a, it's not a one-day thing. It's not I'm a, sure Devontae's still earning it yeah, in some I mean, respects, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's something that you have to you know, keep doing. Um, for him to want to throw you the ball at any time, and that's when you know you have complete trust in him. And I think you know, Tay has done a really good job of that. Burst out of the scene with some big plays early. And I wanted to ask you, because this came up with Mike McCarthy today, too. Uh, I can just imagine DBs uh, on that first go route uh, that you ran past them were saying, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> you know, uh, 83. Who's this guy? It's not Cobb. It's not Adams, not Allison. Uh, but now you're on film and have guys, have teams defended you any differently over the last couple of weeks? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Really? Um, to be honest, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. Um, I can care less about how they defended me. I'm just worried about you know, what I have to do to get open. Just doing your thing. got to do my thing. It was a tough night. Just one, one grab the other night. Yeah, I mean, it just happens that way. You're not going to have 100 yards every single game and 10 catches. And Aaron says, I'm, I'm going to who's open. And Devontae mm -hmm. certainly was beating tough coverages all night. And that was making some hay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Devontae is one of the best in the league to do it. Um, so I have a guy like that in my room to, to see how he does it, you know, day in and day out. It's, you know, it's big for me. So anything surprised you about it so far? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm surprised. Um, you know, I'm just, it, these are things that I, you know, I, I was ready for. All right. See, what do you got? Biggest adjustments for you or toughest adjustments for you from the college game to the pro game? Uh, the weather. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, you're, um, you're a Florida guy. Yeah. Um, He's wearing the hat inside, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is nothing, MBS. This <laughs> yeah. is nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually scared of the, the cold. Not going to lie to you. Um, but, nah, it's, uh, it's definitely different for me. Uh, I played in Florida my whole life. Um, so I've never had a, a real cold game before. Um, you know, so I've been able to deal with it and adjust to it accordingly. But, you know, that's just something that's the biggest thing is just the temperature. <laughs> the cold, yeah. I like it. Devontae Adams, what has he taught you along the way? What have you picked up from him so far that's helped you become a better receiver? Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's anything, you know, on the field that I've learned from him. Um, you know, the, the way he approaches it is just be yourself. You know, do what you're good at. You know, don't try to be like anybody else. Don't try to be like him. Don't try to be like Cobb. You know, be good at what you're good at. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that he's taught me, you know, since I got here, you know, is – Everyone can't be the same person. Um, and, you know, he has a unique talent that a lot of people can't possess. Um, so don't try to be like him. Just, you know, play your own game and you know, do what you can do. Was there a weakness in your game coming from college to the NFL that you figured out pretty early on you needed to focus on a little bit more? Mm, I wouldn't say it was a, a physical thing. Um, I definitely think I could, you know, 
play with anybody, you know, physical, you know, in that aspect. Um, I think it's just more so the, the mental approach. The NFL is a lot more complex than uh, college was. You know, so just learning those things early on is something that I had to, had to do. Yeah, you have to learn how to prepare. You have to learn how to study. I mean, and I know you did in college, but it's nothing mm -hmm. to this degree. What, what's that like? Just how much of a commitment are you putting into it? I mean, you have to put a, a huge commitment into it, um, especially with, you know, 12 back there. Um, he has his own playbook. We have, you know, two separate playbooks now. Um, and so with a guy like that who, who runs, you know, no huddle offense and it's all signal based, you have to learn those fairly quick. Um, and then you have the, the offensive playbook that you get from, you know, the, the offensive coordinator. And there's, and in this offense, there's so much route adjustment, play adjustment, all those types of things post snap mm -hmm. that you've got to kind of just work your way through, right? Yeah, I mean, you got a, a quarterback who changes things at the line of scrimmage, um, and you have about three to four seconds to make your mind up about what he just processed and, and what he just said to you, and now you got to process that and see what the defense is doing. It's a lot that goes on to it. And there's been occasions where it hasn't been quite right. Mm -hmm. He's either barked or pulled you guys aside, you EQ, Jamon for that matter. Uh, and, and what's that like and, and how do you take that and just go to the next one? I mean, that's what you do. You, you gotta just, do you it. You gotta just move on. I mean, it's never, you know, any bad intentions. I mean, he's getting you prepared to play on, you know, Sunday night against Minnesota. Um, so if it happens in practice, that's what he's preparing you for. Um, so that mistake doesn't happen in a game when it's a critical error. So he wants you to understand that the urgency that you have to have when you're approaching this game. So give me a sense of the pent up frustration in that locker room right now with just these games that have gotten away and how you got to just keep grinding to the next one. It's it's got to be it's got to be tough. It's it's wearing on everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough, but you know, we're not walking around frustrated and angry and, you know, upset about it. I mean, it's football, it's the NFL. It's, it's hard to win games. Um, as you can see, you can be the better team and still lose a game. Um, we just got to keep chopping wood, um, just try to figure out how to put a full game together. You know, we have quarters, halves, you know, three quarters where we're the better team. And then something happens where we, we fall apart and we can't finish it off. So we just got to figure out a way to have a full game. Time's getting tight. Yeah, six to go. That's for sure. Z? Let's go back to the draft. What were you hearing hype-wise about yourself, like in terms of rounds, interested teams? What were you hearing going into the draft? Um, I was hearing all different types of things, to be honest. Um, I was hearing, you know, I could be taken as early as the third round. I, could, I was hearing that I wasn't going to be drafted. Um, Get out. Yeah. Um, really? You I know. hope you fired that agent. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, it wasn't even my agent. My, right. my agent was, you know, he, he was praising me, and um, he said that I could – he was the one telling me I could go as early as the third round. Um, but, like I said, you just never know what a team needs and, and – and what's going to happen on draft day, um, especially because I had transferred after my second year um, at North Carolina State. And so there was a lot of questions about, you know, where is he going to be or why did he transfer? So there was a lot of off the field questions. They weren't really questioning my ability. It was more so the, the questions off the field. It's not like you were in trouble. No, nah, I never had gotten in any trouble. But, you know, once you know, a kid transfers. It's always, why did he transfer? Was he running from something? Or, a flag go up? And yeah, so, you know, that's, that's, that's really unfair. Why did you transfer? Um, it was just the, the scheme. I didn't feel like I was in a position to put myself at the, the next level. Um, you know, I feel like I had a lot of talent, and it wasn't being used in the right way. I feel like I had to make a business decision to go out and, and change that. So you sat a year and finished up at South Florida, mm -hmm. closer to home. Yep. It had to be nice. It was definitely nice. I bet it was. <laughs> so where were you? And who were you with when the Packers called and you found out you got drafted? Uh, it was just me, my mom, uh, my dad, and my dog, and my little brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. No big party. Those are people who have been with me since day one. Um, and that's who I feel like I need to celebrate it with. Who celebrated the most? The dog. Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dog didn't know what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> he definitely didn't know what was going on. Um, I, think, I think my mom did. I think she was the most excited. Um, she's not even into football. I think it's just her realizing that, you know, all my hard work had paid off and, you know, that she gets to see me live out my dream. But I was going to say, you had to tell mom, this is my dream, way before that phone call, right? Yeah, um, and so I told her that when I was in the, the third grade. And really? 
and she told me, well, you can't just be a football player. You need to have a, a, a plan. Um, and she still says that to this day. Um, you know, so I think that's something that I always applaud my mom for is because she never let me just say, I just want to be an athlete. It was did, always more than that. Did she not want to see you get hurt either? Was it sort of a, hey, I don't want to see my little man getting nah, smashed all over the field? Nah, I just think that she's more of a realist, and mm. she understands that you know everybody can't go to the NFL. Um, and even if you do, it's not going to last forever. You know, so she wants to make sure that the, the business side of me was always prepared. How young's your little brother? He is 17. Oh, 17. Is he a football player too? Mm -hmm. oh. Nice, nice, nice. Like college, about to go to college kind he of football one more player? Year. He has one more year, so we got some time. Yeah. All right. Any uh, any hype around him? Uh, I think more so on the, on the track side than the football oh, side. Oh, okay, cool. Well, you've got the track speed to, to boot <laughs> with Marquez Valdez Scanling, our guest tonight, just getting started. A little more with MVS when we come back. Don't go away. Fifth quarter returns in a minute. We'll be looking for our hot play of the day from last Thursday night, so get ready for that. We'll be back right after this timeout. Live from the Stadium View Bar and Grill, here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. All right, welcome back with MVS tonight. And we'll get back to Marquez in a moment. We got to get our hot play of the day in from last Thursday night. You know how it works. You guess the hot play of the day from our friends at Robinson's and you'll take home a prize tonight. Also get qualified for a grand prize drawing coming up in just over a month already. And that'll be a pair of indoor clubs to that finale against the Detroit Lions. So line them up and let's see if we can knock down the hottest play from last Thursday night. We got George up first. What's George? your guess? I'm going to say uh, Robert Tanyan's 54 yard touchdown. Okay. Well, that hot play was a long play to an unlikely target. Second and 10, Green Bay, 46 yard line of the Packers. Rodgers under center, Jones the lone setback. Rodgers straight back. Tight pocket, rolls right, disengages from a defender. Now Directy lofts it deep down the middle. He's got Robert Tanyan of all people in the end zone for a touchdown. Uh -huh. oh Listen to the commentators. Yeah. All people. 54 <laughs> yards. They beat the deep safety Bradley McDougal and the Packers have a 13 to three lead. Boy, it was looking pretty good right there with Robert Tanyan, who uh, had his first catch as a pro turn into his first mm -hmm. touchdown as a pro. Just had a nice, like, expanded go route and beat him off the line. I saw Aaron roll out right, and I just knew I had a second chance in what he does, and he likes to take shots on the field. So I knew that I was going to get an opportunity to make a big play. Very big play. George, you're in. That's our hot play of the day. Congratulations. We'll do the cold play a little bit later on. MVS, our guest tonight, Packer rookie wide receiver. You remember your first touchdown in Motown? I do remember my first touchdown. What was touchdown. the route? Um, <laughs> I, would, I couldn't even explain it if I tried, to really? be honest. Um, it was just kind of a, a corner route to the back of the end zone. Um, it was kind of a, a fake play to, to Tay, and then I released out late. Okay. Where's the touchdown ball? Um, it's still in my locker. I haven't taken it out yet. Really? Yeah, I haven't taken it out yet. You got so many boxes around your locker today. <laughs> you didn't send that to your mom yet? <laughs> nah, I haven't yet. <laughs> All right. Send her the second one. That was a couple of weeks ago. But here's where you stand. 24 for uh, 410, 17-yard average. Mentioned that was ninth in the NFL this year among qualifying receivers. And here's where you rank among recent rookie wide receivers. You're on pace for what? It's, uh, what, 10 games in? Two and a half a grab. You're going to get up to 40 odd catches, probably. Well over 600. Javon Walker, 23 catches, 319 yards and a touch in his rookie season. He was pretty good, electrifying there. Greg Jennings, 45 for 632 and three. James Jones, 47 catches, 676 yards and two. Jordy Nelson's rookie year was 33 grabs for 366 and two scores. Randall Cobb was 25 for 375 and one. And Devontae Adams was, three, was 38 for 446 and three. Right in very good company among all those recent rookie wide receivers for the Packers. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate it. Are, are you a stats guy? Do you follow your stats or do you just... Nah. Just go play. Just go play football. I can care less about stats. Yeah. I can care less about it. Has that, is that always been the case for you? Yeah, I mean, the most important stat is winning. Um, and so for not winning, um, stats don't matter. You can go out and, you know, have a monster game like Tay and we lose and no one talks about it. Yeah, right. really, really. Uh, 
Opportunity knocked a little louder, though, when Gmo went down, obviously. I mean, you were getting into the mix a little bit in the rotation early on in the season, but then Geronimo's down. All of a sudden, Randall's missed now six games with his hamstring injury. Uh, and uh, so you guys have had to take on a much bigger role as rookies than mm -hmm. probably you even anticipated, right? Yeah, but I mean, you know, you got to be ready to go at yeah. any time. It's a, it's a long NFL season. Um, a very violent game. People go down all the time. Um, so when your number's called, you got to be ready for your opportunity. You mentioned a very violent game. When you see an injury like an Alex Smith, something like that, is that just a reminder that this is a short opportunity for you and you need to take advantage of every chance that you get at it? I um, mean, yeah, I don't even have to be reminded um, by seeing other people go down. Um, I just I understand that from, from day one, um, just from – place where I'm from it's, it's, it's like that uh, you know it, they, they can be taken from you at any time you know so I take every play like it's my last play you know I wake up every day like it could be my last day so I'll live it out to my fullest you're from st. Petersburg Florida uh, tell us about what that was like growing up for you um, it definitely wasn't the, the best of environments um, seen a lot of friends um, go down the wrong paths um, I wouldn't a lot of things that I shouldn't have seen at a very young age um, but, you know, it made me to the person I am today. Um, you know, I had great support around me, um, great family who were able to keep me, you know, outside of those, you know, troubles um, and you know, kept me involved in the right things around the right people, and it got me here today. Everybody has that fork in the road where you can go the one path where some guys went, St. Petersburg, and you had those supporting you to steer you on the other. How hard was that? I mean, you seeing friends, there's peer pressure like crazy in a neighborhood like that and an upbringing like that. How did, how did you avoid it? Was it all the family and the sport, schools, everything um, else? You know, I think it was just, I made my mind up a long time ago um, that I just didn't want to get stuck in that place. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've seen you know, people who are more, more talented than me growing up, you know, not make it out of there, um, who are still there to this day or, you know, are in jail or dead. Um, you know, so I just made my mind up a long time ago that I just wanted to be better than that. It was that tough, that violent? I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough it's neighborhood. Definitely very tough. Down there. It was like Kabir in Compton. Remember when he <laughs> right. was here? That was unbelievable. What Was it always football for you? I mean, was that kind of a way that you saw of getting out of that was your path? Um, actually, football wasn't even my first sport. Um, my first sport was baseball. I played baseball my whole life. Uh, I didn't start playing football until I was in maybe like you know nine or ten years old. But I was playing baseball since I was like you know six, um, and you know I didn't really start taking football serious until I got into, into high school. Um, about maybe my eleventh grade years, when I started taking football serious. Um, it was always baseball, and um, you know that was just something that I kind of just developed over time and got better as, I, as time I went on. I see the coach saying, uh, this guy's big, he can run. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's Good get hands. Him on let's get yeah. him in pads and, and see what happens. So uh, baseball, did you play baseball throughout high school then too? Mm -hmm. yep. Was there any hype around you getting? Um, no, it's, it's harder to get recruited in baseball, especially yeah. through, through high school. You have to be like um, involved in like the, the travel teams and stuff. And I was playing a lot of different sports at that time. Um, so I wasn't able to fully commit to one sport um, so I was I didn't really do the, the travel baseball and the AAU thing and that's where you get recruited for baseball I saw a picture you tweeted out after the ball game from a couple of guys from your town teammates mm -hmm. of yours with the Bulls uh, Shaquille and Shaquem Griffin mm -hmm. uh, pretty neat photo can you tell me a little bit about that um, actually I've known those guys since we were like you know four years old um, really yeah we went to pre-k together um, so you know and we've been around one another since since we were little um, I've, we went to Little league together, we went to middle school together, high school together, um, to separate colleges. Um, but, you know, since from four to 18 years old, we were, you know, close friends. So Shaquille's been in the league, and Shaquem, if you don't know, he's a player drafted in the fifth round, I think, this year yeah. by Seattle. Uh, birth defect, right? No. No? Mm, so did, actually. He, um, lo he lost a hand. He lost his hand. Um, so when he was um, in the womb with his twin brother, the umbilical cord wrapped around his hand. Um, ah. And so when, when he was about three, three and a half years old, they had to amputate it. But okay. he had his hand um, growing up. It just it brought him a lot of pain. So um, they had to amputate it, and he's been playing with this since then. It's an amazing story. What a story, uh, yeah. It is an amazing story. Uh, and how was he, like, knowing that, okay, he's got this disability, but it was not going to stop 
him from realizing the same dream you had? Yeah, I mean, no one ever seen his disability. Um, he did everything that we did. You know, we, we he's actually on my, uh, we ran track together. He's on my track team. We won states uh, my senior year in high school. Um, and, you know, he played every sport that we played, um, did everything that we did. Um, so it was never a disability. We never treated him any different. Um, He's like, one of the Seahawks, the guy's making plays. Yeah, I mean, like I say, he's, <laughs> it's not even a disability for him. He, he does everything that everyone else can do. And he's doing it very well. Awesome mm -hmm. story. Great story there, Marquez. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look ahead to the Minnesota Vikings and what's in front for these young wide receivers here and hopefully a long run in Titletown. Don't go away. The fifth quarter returns to the stadium view with Marquez Valdez scantling right after this timeout. Here are Mark Daniels and Matt Z. All right, welcome back, everybody, as we're winding it down here with Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Before we return to MVS for one more segment, we got to look for a cold play winner from our friends at Robinson. Same rules, same prizes. Let's see if we can't get a winner right out of the gate here. Z, who you got? Sandy is up. Sandy, Sandy what's your guess? Uh, my guess is the missed field goal by Mason Crosby. The missed field goal? Yeah, that came Ooh. back to bite him a little bit, but it wasn't Detroit, so no, not quite the... <laughs> No, not the missed field goal, but Sorry, thanks, Sandy. Sandy. Sorry, Sandy. What's your guess? Mike McCarthy's call on fourth down. I was going to take any play in the fourth quarter of that game, just about any play. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but, yeah, the game was on ice with the 423 left. Third and two at the 33. Aaron had my guess. Wide open on that little quick out route, but the ball didn't get there until it skipped off the turf. What the heck happened, Aaron? Yeah, the ball just stuck to my hand and went in the dirt. That was uh, frustrating. Obviously, I can do that 100 times and probably not do that again. So, um, yeah, it was a gimme. It was a gimme. Thought for sure McCarthy might gimme Rogers one more shot, but he decided to punt instead. I definitely, um, you know, we had the injuries to Kenny Clark and, and uh, you know, Mike Daniels. So, yeah, it was definitely a uh, consideration there. But with the one time out and then, uh, you know, ability to stop the clock at the two minutes. So, we, we, played, the, we played the numbers, but. We consider taking the time out there and going for it on fourth and two. But we all know what happened. Punted, didn't get it back. Seahawks got a couple of first downs. That was it. Marquez, uh, who's our winner? Jeff. Jeff, way to go. You're uh, the Coldplay winner tonight and qualified for the grand prize. Short little outright. You had to just be as wild-eyed as I was when I saw that ball just not get out of his hands. Yeah, I mean. So Aaron Rodgers like. Yeah, I mean, he's made that throw a thousand times. And if he can make it, you know, again, he would, he would make it with these. Um, <laughs> But, you know, he's, he's human. He's going to miss some throws. It's, it's going to happen. Um, no one's ever going to be perfect. And, you know, but like I said, one play doesn't determine a game. We True. We have many other opportunities to go and, and score some points. I mean, we scored three points in the second half. Well, you had the first down so easy, did you? That's, that's the biggest yeah, thing. I know. You did. No question about it. That was a tough thing. All right, bouncing back. Vikings coming up on Sunday. First of the rematches in the north. Uh, what were your impressions of the Minnesota D from uh, – way back in that goofy tie ball game uh i mean we had opportunities to go out and win that game too oh man um, started well in that one yeah you know we got we had a lot of big plays in that game and i think um we're gonna go down and uh, keep doing that and, and go out with the win that was the height of the roughing the passer nonsense yeah. from early in the season that thankfully quieted down but that really call cost you guys for sure it's been one thing after another uh you know this season for those types of games uh but very talented back there obviously with the minnesota defense harrison smith Xavier rhodes trey waynes uh that's a good formidable bunch mm -hmm. to watch them at all last night um we watched a little bit today um yeah. but you know they're human too um they, anyway anyone can get beat i mean and we went out and last time we played them we the receivers had a pretty good day so yeah you did got up on them early that's mm -hmm. for sure z What's your first football memory? Ooh. Uh, my first football memory. Um, that's a tough question. Um, I think waking up for my first football game at like 6 in the morning in, in Little League. We started our games at like 8 o'clock, so we had to be in the field like an hour and a half early for 8 a.m.? Mm -hmm. In Little League. That's tough. First Little. game. Yep. How'd you feel about getting up at 6 in the morning? <laughs> it sucked. You know? <laughs> Especially I'm a little kid. Definitely didn't want to wake up to go play football. Um, but, you know, it was cool, though. If you weren't an NFL football player, what would you be doing occupation-wise? Um, well, when football is over for me, I want to be a sports agent. So um, that's, that's my goal. Who were your favorite teams or favorite players growing up? Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, because um, that's the hometown. Um, 
you know, 25 minutes away from my hometown is where they played at. Um, I actually played my college football games at that same stadium. Um, so that was the uh, favorite team growing up. Um, and favorite wide receiver is Larry Fitzgerald, mm. which is why I won number 11 in high school and in college. Good choice. Um, guy's fantastic. Man. Yeah. Favorite, favorite guy. Unbelievable so guy. I'm excited to, to go up. Yeah, you're going to see him in a couple of a weeks. A couple of weeks. Oh, that ought to be good. Yeah. That'll be good. I mean, you want a role model. I can't think of a better person. Uh, who's been a great player for a long time. Mm. He's fantastic. I've had a chance to talk to him several times over the years. Uh, yeah, good choice there. Is, is th he's your favorite guy growing up. Is that going to be one of those moments for you where it's like, wow, I'm, in, I'm playing the same sport at the same level as the guy I grew up idolizing? Um, I wouldn't say that. I don't think it's going to be one of those moments. I mean, you know, that, that came and went um, a while <laughs> ago, um, you know, when I first got here, I was like, oh, man, that's, that's Aaron Rodgers. And then yeah. after about five minutes, I'm like, oh, he's just a regular guy. Uh -huh. You know what Tanya told me today? He still gets nervous in the huddle because it's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, yes. Wow. Yeah, you know, he's still, you know, and he's playing with, you know, Jimmy Graham, great tight end, you know, Mercedes and, and all that. And he goes, yeah, yeah. I got to admit, I still get nervous because it's Aaron. You know, guys are like that all the way through with Favre and with Aaron for sure. No question about that. Did you ever go to the old sombrero? In Tampa? Mm -hmm. So it was always Raymond James when you were yeah. growing up. All right. Were you hoping the Buccaneers would be the team that would draft you? Uh, definitely not. Um, yeah? Um, yeah. Nah, definitely not. Um, Why is that? Um, I just wanted to, you know, be in a, a different place. I've okay. played there my whole life. Um, and you know, I just wanted to you know, experience something new. What's one thing about you that Packers fans would be surprised to learn? Like a unique hobby or just something most people wouldn't know? Um, that I've never drank a day in my life. Really? Yeah, never right. had alcohol. What? This is Green Bay, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tough city for you to be in, then. Yeah, I've, I've never had you know any type of alcohol or drug a day in my life. Now, was that kind of set in place by your parents? Was that just kind of lessons you learned growing up that hey, stay away from this stuff, bad roads? Um, I mean, my parents obviously you know influenced me to never do those things. Um, but, you know, there's obviously pressures around you, especially in the area that I grew up in, especially with drugs um, and then college, obviously, with alcohol. But, you know, it was just something I had never seen a purpose for. Um, that's nothing good for you, so there's no point of, of doing it. So if you do a Lambo leap and someone accidentally pours a beer on you, which happens, is that, <laughs> that could be a shock to yeah. your system. <laughs> hey, I <Yeah>. hope not. <laughs> Hopefully uh, that, just that doesn't happen. clamp down on the mouth guard, <laughs> just take it and just, just deal with it. Yeah, that's right. Both your TDs are on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yep. need one here. I need one here. Really bad. <laughs> really bad. It's well, a unique experience, but it, yeah, you will famously get something dumped on you. <laughs> Hopefully I, it's just popcorn or something. Yeah, right? that's not yeah. bad. And it shouldn't be a tough leap for you. Nah. No, with your frame and speed, you'll get right up there. It's, it's not like Dean Lowry last year on that fumble return. Oh, my goodness. Where he really had to push him on up there and push him on up there. Um, so how's this team going to finish? Now, Marquez, uh, we just talked about how their games have gotten away. You're gritting your teeth. You're going back to work today. You're going to get probably a little bit of a break on the holiday Thursday and then go to Minnesota and, and finally finish the deal. Yeah, we just got to you know put it all together, um, especially on the road. I mean, we, we play super well at home, um, but every time we go on the road, we just we fall apart at the end. So I think this is the, the time where we got to – really turned around or, you know, our playoff chances are getting slimmer and slimmer if we don't win. So everybody stayed pretty even keel. Let's just, let's get back to the business of yeah, preparing. I mean, no one's getting a little wound up about nah, this. Nah, I mean, like I said, it's, it's tough to win in the NFL. Yeah. Every, everybody's good. No matter what their record says, everybody can play. Um, and I think that, you know, we all know that we're a really good football team once we all put it together. I think that That's we're just... That's the tantalizing thing. You go to L.A., you're there. You yeah. go to Foxborough, you're there. You're in Seattle, you're le You're there. You yeah. know you're close. Yeah. You know you're in these games with very, very good teams. So I think that's just the, the biggest thing for us is that, you know, it's not like we're going to these teams and just getting blown out. You know, we're, we're beating true. these teams and, you know, one like play the Super here Bowl and champions. Just, Holy just cow. Things just fall apart, and I think that's just the... The thing about it is that we just got to figure Aaron put it, it out. We need that galvanizing moment. We need that one thing, either one speech or one play or one moment that will convince us that, okay, this is how we can do it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you make that galvanizing moment here on uh, Sunday in Minnesota? Sunday That's night. always the plan. That out. would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. Plan. You've made a bunch already. you got a lot more in your future. 
Boy, talk about a stand-up character guy from St. Petersburg, Florida, who's in for a real treat in about another month when he has to go out and buy a shovel or get some neighbors to snow blow his driveway or everything else that he'll have to deal with. Uh, but you're prepared will, for everything in life. You'll be prepared for this as well. Will MVS be the first NFL wide receiver to wear a winter coat while playing? A game on Sunday. Definitely a thought. Yeah, definitely a thought. A thought, yeah. definitely a thought. Your blood will North pick face. it up. It's, 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 it's only cold. It's only cold. Marquez Valdez Scanling, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. we had a chance to visit. You did an awesome job. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll head to the finish line. Look ahead to Sunday night in the cities. Don't go away. The fifth quarter returns right after this. All right, welcome back, everybody. And I was all set to buy MVS a beer for coming right? over tonight. No kidding. I don't want to. Wow. That's amazing. Good for him. Good for him. Good yeah, for him. No problem. All right. Good for the Pack if they get a win on the road on Sunday night in Minnesota. They went from seventh to ninth in the NFC standings now at four, five, and one. But Dallas five and five, Philly four and six, Carolina six and four. They lost. Atlanta's four and six. It's a mess in the middle of yeah. the NFC, folks, behind uh, the Rams and the Saints. So. It could happen. It could still happen. Carolina, they're home to Seattle this week. The Bears play the Lions on Thanksgiving Day. Cowboys and Redskins are hooking up, and Washington's probably going to be a mess with Colt McCoy, a quarterback. Who knows what's going to happen? But it isn't going to happen until these guys figure out a way to get a W. Yes, and it starts on the road. you got to get that first one on the road. If you lose in Minnesota... Yeah, I it's don't think tough. it's going to happen. I don't think it but happens. But if they, like I thought, if Seattle, they win Seattle, they're going to go on a big push. If they win in Minnesota, they're still very capable yeah. of that run to the finish line. We'll have to wait and see. Mike Daniels not going to play for a couple of weeks for right. injury. Jimmy Graham, broken thumb, going to try a splint, wants to play this week. Kevin King, Randall Cobb should be back. There's your medical news of the day. So, uh, but it's still going to be on the tough side for the boys against the Vikes. And when the pack's away, you get to play. Our friends at Robinson's have a gift card to the Packer Pro Shop just for coming by who's going shopping in time for the holidays g2 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 who's g2 There's that's g2. g2 and he can get the new lid as well let's be honest anybody could be g2 no kidding that's true but i'll take your word for it Congrats, like buddy. Got an idea to prove it. we got some more great door prizes we're gonna give away at the end of this pro we're off the air our new era hat and more packer book the 50 greatest players of all time Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, get together with your family and tell them how much you love them. And we'll see you next Monday night after the Packers take on the Vikings. From Matt Z, I'm Mark Daniels. Thanks for coming out. So long, everybody. Thanks, everybody.